go watch film. Don't worry, we got you, coach. Ooh, I'm hungry. We got you, coach. Where's my visor? We got you, coach. Looking for a mortgage team that has your back? That team is Southeast Mortgage. We got you. Hey, Coach, uh, obviously, pretty good storms out there and everything. How, how did that affect your preparation today and what were y'all able to well, do? We today? got about a third in uh, on the field, which we wanted to be outside all day today. And um, unfortunately, got sent in with lightning. I don't even know what time it was. I would say one third of practice. Uh, we had about a two hour practice and uh, we went in about a third of the way through. So we got to get most of it in out there. But when we went inside, it was no issue because we transitioned easy in there and um, we had red area today and that made it even easier because when you do red area, you don't use as much of the field. So we have two ends to the indoor and that was fine. Kirby, I'm sure it's kind of a new sensation for the freshmen that are working on the scout team this week. Just generally, how have they kind of, you know, stood up and, and uh, accepted that challenge of running on the scout team? Well, it's a, it's a culture here that we create through years of doing it. You know, it's not a freshman thing. It's a, I mean, it's a team thing. I mean, it's so many guys embrace it. I mean, we've, we've had Song and Michelle and Nick Chubb go down there and work Wildcat. We've had, uh, you know, Countless guys go down there and work, and we show them clips of whether it's Miko Harmon, uh, Holyfield, Isaiah Wilson. I mean, you name it. I don't think there's been a player here that didn't. Last year, George Pickens was on the scout team for three weeks. Uh, so it's not a, it's not seen as a demotion of any kind. It's seen as a development, and uh, we take pride in developing players. And the best way to develop is to go down there. JT Daniels did it in, uh, while he was injured and came back from it. So. They, they've been great. They do a good job of pushing and understanding the kind of culture of how practice goes of, of, of competing. Kirby, uh, Dan was talking about uh, just life in general as a coach, you know, wake up in the middle of the night during the season being regular, pregame routine, you know, multiple bathroom stops, darkness. What's your pregame routine and, and what is it like managing your life on those few hours you have away from football during the season? Um, I don't know that I really have a pregame uh, ritual or routine. I, I don't think. I think if you get a, a superstitious habit, it, it, you, you know, you, you, you might not be able to follow it all the time. You know, you have different um, venues you play in, different times you play. I mean, everything changes. So I like to be flexible and adjustable, and it's not always the same. I mean, we eat pregame meal at the same time, but outside of that, you know, I, I, I try to change it up in, in terms of. Uh, what I think about what I do pregame. There's a checklist you go through, but uh, you know I heard Adam Wainwright talking the other night and uh, the pitcher for the cards, and he was talking about how if you got something that you just can't break, that's superstition, and, and that can be a negative. That can be a detriment to your mindset. And we try not to do that. So we don't we don't go with superstitions. We just try to prepare ourselves best we can to get ready to play before the game. What sleeping sound? Do you ever catch yourself waking up in the middle of the night? Just yeah, I've been that way since I was a small child. I mean, I think everybody wakes up in the middle of the night sometimes, and sometimes you're thinking about football, sometimes you're thinking about uh, how you can do it better, how you can be a better parent, husband, father. So, um, yeah, that happens. Robert Beal got a lot of playing time at the end of last season after Adam Anderson's suspension. How do you think that extended run has sort of helped him going into the start of this season? Yeah, it's built his confidence up. I think uh, he's, he's very confident in the system now. We're very confident in him. Because of the play and time he, he, he's, he's earned, uh, he did a tremendous job at the end of the year. He's had a really good camp. I mean, he's playing physical, playing tough. Uh, I think he realizes this is a big opportunity for him. So I'm very pleased with, with what he's done, the work he's done. As Javon Boyard heads into his sophomore year, he played cornerback uh, for four years at Baldwin and then kind of crossover receiver. But where does he really fit in in this defensive backs group? And what's, his, what's been his progression since he's gotten here? Well, he has tremendous toughness. He has tremendous competitiveness. Uh, he's very physical. He loves the game. He's been a ball hawk all camp for us. Uh, just, I mean, the consummate team player that does whatever you want him to do on special teams, and he comes to work every day. And um, he's improved. You know, he probably could have played more last year, but maybe he wasn't quite ready. And 
he's earned it through spring practice and uh, fall camp. He's earned the opportunity to, to go out there and compete with those other guys and get playing time. Kirby, it's been a pretty smooth operation with the uh, new co-defensive coordinators. And will Glenn stay in the box and will be on the field? Uh, we'll decide that closer to the game. So both those guys will be very involved. Yeah, this is really the first time in his career that Dominic Blaylock has had a normal fall camp. How do you think that has helped him, especially going in back into Mercedes-Benz Stadium and looking to play a role for you guys this year? Uh, you know, I, I don't think he thinks about a normal fall camp. You know, he's, he's day by day giving his best effort and making our team better. He competes every day. He, he's another guy that just works so hard. You know, I don't, I don't think he overanalyzes it and, and – and, Again, thinks about superstitious things. Those, those are things he can't control. What he does control is how hard he works for us, um, how consistent he plays, and uh, his toughness. It just kind of takes on a personality for our offense of uh, being a guy that doesn't ever complain. Uh, Stetson made a comment the other day. He was talking about how tough it was to throw against Keeley Ringo in, in practice, you know, the ones on ones. Uh, it's, what kind of camp has he had? And, you know, obviously with. You know, the fame he got last year, have you seen him keep that compartmentalized and continue the, the progression you're looking for? Yeah, I think Kitty's done a great job. You know, you worry about a, a play like that, you know, going to a guy's head or maybe um, not realizing his deficiencies and how he can improve them. And we had several talks in the off season, and um, he, he embraced it. You know, he, he was the first to admit, like, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not where I need to be. I mean, he, he, he had some plays in that game that weren't so good. And he, he, he admitted that. And he, he said, I, I can improve, and that's what I want to do. And, you know, he's been a, he's been a leader. He's been uh, an everyday work guy. And uh, I'm expecting him to have a great season because of the work he's put in. You know, he's, he's worked really hard to, to, to be a good player. Yeah, I guess following up on Keeley, what does your mindset look like as a coach when you've got a guy who – like Chips that had a, a huge play and got a lot of things, so has a long way to go. How do you, I guess, one, praise what he has done, but two, let him know that he's still got a long way to go? You're just honest with him. I mean, be honest with him. The, the, he would be the first to admit that, I mean, the, the play doesn't define the player, you know, and I think so many people in the fans, they want to do that, but that's he can't let that do that to him. Otherwise, he's limiting himself to plateauing where he is, and, and he, he can still ascend. You know, he's a young player. He's only really played two years. Of, of football with us, so he has a lot of things he can improve on, and he's worked really hard on them. He's gotten uh, so much better with his tackling and his physicality, and he, he continues to improve on that. Kirby, you uh, obviously had a lot of experience at Alabama turning the page after the championship. This past year's championship was, was different. It was 41 years in the making. How did you balance the program, you appreciating what was done with also not dwelling on it and having the same turn of the page mentality. I think the experiences there helped me because I don't see it that different. You know, I mean, we won one in, in 2009, and I don't know when the, the previous one was there, and it certainly went 40 years, but it was it was not recent. So I think any time uh, you win one, you turn the page, and it's built around the culture of your program. If, you're, if your program's just built on instant gratification and wins and patting people on the back, then you're probably going to struggle more. But it just was never about that here. Um, it's been about the process of how you, you develop players, how hard you work. It's, it's never been about telling guys how good they are, but yet telling guys how good we can be. And that's since we've come back from that game, that's that we turned the page and focused on it. Um, the distraction's been more outward in terms of media and that stuff, not inward in terms of what our team thinks about. They're not thinking about last year. They realize that uh, this year is going to be done and based on its own merit. I think it was 1992 on Ben. Okay. Uh, on Eric Gilbert, uh, he's obviously been a guy you brought a long ways. Is he close to where you want him to be, where he needs to be going into the season? Um. I, I don't know. It's hard to measure because uh, I think he's sky's the limit in terms of his, you know, his talent and things. But the consistency and performance he has to have, he has to have consistency in practice and dependability. And, um, that's something that he continues to, to work on and strive on. And I know nobody wants it any more than he does.
Kirby uh, Oregon's wide receiver core obviously lost uh, some of their top guys and, and some of the younger guys are now have more prominent roles. How much does it help that, that Brian's been in practice with them the last couple of years to kind of fill you in on a little, little bit personnel-wise what they have? You know, I don't know. Sometimes that can be good and bad. Um, you know, maybe you know too much. Um, maybe, you know, same way with Dan, you know. He knows a lot about our guys. So, you know, players change. Players get better. Players grow up. Maybe they're not the same person they were. You don't, I, I don't like taking information like that and, and making assumptions off of it. We certainly get personnel and, and talk about guys, but you, know, you watch the film, the film speaks much louder than what a coach's comments are. And we put a lot more value on that, that big eye in the sky than we do just you know, what people say about players. Coach, uh, it was uh, uh, said it was asked about uh, uh, Kenny yesterday and asked about what's the biggest difference, I guess, at the uh, season and condition. He mentioned his explosiveness. Is that something that you noticed as well with him? I didn't even follow the question. Cedric talked about explosiveness. Now, now Kenny back in time, he said he was more explosive. Seems to be more explosive this year than back here. Well, he's got more opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's two guys that are pretty explosive that aren't back there. And uh, I've always thought Kenny was explosive. And, uh, and had great vision and one of our best runners. Uh, he's just had more opportunities, you know, and uh, there's probably been more holes out there too with some of those guys gone. So uh, you've certainly seen uh, uh, some, <coughs> some flashy plays by him. And I don't know that it's, I think he's changed his mentality. He's certainly uh, a more thought about leader and he's asserted himself in that role more. Um, but as far as his play on the field, Kenny's always, He's always been a hard worker and uh, a competitor. Stetson told us yesterday that Bubbly by Kobe Clay and uh, Juicy by Notorious B.I.G. are two songs he listens to to sort of get him in the mood. Is there any music you listen to, whether you're walking into the stadium or whenever it might be, to sort of help you get in the right zone going into a game? I listen to music, but I don't. I don't know. I, I sadly don't know the names of the songs or the specifics of them. I don't turn. I'm not superstitious to where I have to listen to a certain thing. So I don't know those two songs. I don't know anything about those songs. I couldn't tell you anything about them. I might listen to those. I wouldn't know if I did. I do like what I listen to, but I don't really know what it is. Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next one if it's not what I like. <laughs> Do you have much of a relationship with uh, Charles Winslet down from Putnam County? He just he just got his 350 win, 350th career win, <laughs> and he is a UGA alum. Kind of describe your relationship with him and just how you've grown, known him over the years. Yeah, he's uh, he's 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 quite the character. He um, has been a long time Bulldog fan, played baseball here, and uh, he's told some great stories. And uh, he was a guy that um, we used to meet with to help uh, with the option and things like that. And he was probably the most disappointed guy when Paul Johnson stepped down at Georgia Tech just because he <laughs> felt like he was out of a role. But he was he was a guy that always, you know, in the off season and things we go clinic with and um, he's good friends with my dad and they played each other in years down in South Georgia and uh, he's been around and coached a lot of places that, that <coughs> I recruited. So I have a lot of respect for uh, for Coach Winslet and the job he's done and what he's meant to Georgia High School. Uh, is a part of you excited to play a team like Oregon with a brand as big as it is? Like, does it mean anything recruiting with you or anything like that? Yeah, it's awesome playing these kind of games. You know, I think they're a, obviously a very uh, well-respected program, well-liked program. Recruits love the infatuation with um, the uniforms and Nike and uh, all the stuff it means. So it's a it's a big stage to be on, and uh, certainly I'm sure it's mutual for them. You know, it's an opportunity to improve your your national exposure and nationally recruit. Coach, I know we ask about Dan all the time, but you also know Tosh DePoy extremely yeah. well. Uh, how does his uh, style, Dan's style, kind of mesh? And again, your knowledge of him, how does it help you prepare for this game? Anyway? Yeah, Tosh is a really good football coach, man. He's passionate, he's energetic. You know that the players are going to be, they're going to run through a wall for he and Dan. They're both really similar in their motivation skills with players and uh, just they're great coaches because they're great men and they're fun to be around. I mean, they make practice fun. They make meetings fun. They make work fun. And uh, they'll do a great job. You know, those, those players will 
will buy in and, 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 and run through a wall for those guys. And, and Tosh has done a great job uh, historically where he's been. They've been good on defense. Kirby, uh, Jalen Walker, somebody we got to see back in the spring. Just how has he handled these last few months and getting ready for his freshman year? Yeah, he's, he's tough, man. He's a physical player, uh, really smart. Um, he's picking things up. Um, he's helped us in multiple roles. You know, he's playing inside backer. He's playing a sub rusher. Um, talented, talented kid. And uh, you know, I love about Jason is he he's a coach's son. So I'm always particular to those guys because of uh, the fact I grew up in that environment. And uh, he, he he just is so respectful and does things the right way and and represents us the right way. And he's going to be a hell of a player. So what kind of role will Dejon Edwards play as a support back this season? No, he's not a support back. I mean, he's one of our guys, man. He's he's had a great camp. I mean, he's he's uh, he's man, his toughness. I mean, the guy works so hard. He's he's run the ball really well. I mean, he's uh, he's had some really flashy good plays. You know, he's a he's a guy that we're expecting to have a big season and uh, excited to see what he can do. We've got time for two more questions. So, Coach, everybody mentions the talent that left last year, but it was mainly the leadership and the intangibles that put you guys over the top. Was there any players that you can specifically mention that have stepped into those leadership roles over the offseason? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Uh, Cedric Van Pran's done a great job. Pop's done a great job. Keely's done a great job. Uh, Kenny's done a great job. I mean, the tight ends, Darnell and Brock, um, Broderick, you know, Warren Erickson every day. I mean, it's just there's a lot of guys, and it's not a – it's not where it's done by two or three people. It's done by committee, and I think last year's group helped help show these guys how to do it, and they've uh, they've embraced doing it. But you know, we haven't had real adversity, so you find out a lot more about your team when you get some adversity. Kirby, I know you're, you're hyper focused on this one game, so this this is kind of a ten thousand foot question as far as the program and when you took it over and what you envisioned Georgia could be and what needed to happen for Georgia to be there. Is it where it needs to be? How much work is left to be done for this program to be where you would ideally like to see it? You know, I just talked to the team about this concept of whether you, you think you you arrived and uh, you never do that. Like, like, when would you say that? I mean, when would I ever say that we're where we need to be? That 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 doesn't exist. It is not. It's not like on a on a continuum, it's like you, you, you have to keep going, and we're not there. We're not, we're not close to there. We, we have a lot of work to do, and uh, that's always going to be the case because, you know, you're always trying to be the best, and when you start thinking that, that oh, okay, I, I've gotten things like I want them, that's, that's the first sign you're going to get complacent and the first sign you're going to get bit, and uh, that's not what we want. We want to, I, I want each team to be the best team they can possibly be. And by going out and having an organization where you recruit really good football players and you have great people on your staff, you give yourself the opportunity to put together a really good football team every year at the University of Georgia. You have all the support and all the, the, the things that you need to be successful. And uh, you just got to use them the right way. And uh, we try to do that best we can. Thanks. Thank you. We have a couple of uh, players.